Let's continue. Now, with Vita and HC calculations, we will be able to observe the appropriated ions for plants as supplied by the three different waters in our example. As a result of using this program, we can see in these three parallel lines the ionic contributions of our selected waters, those with low, medium, and high amounts of solids dissolved in that. First, we can distinguish the differences between the total solids and the nutritive solids contained as soluble ions in each of the waters. In order to formulate, Vitar and HC will be working on the calculated results. These results charts were automatically computed by the program. In them, you can observe three red cells. One of them indicates that water number nine has too high a sodium value. The other two show that water number 18 is still worth in its sodium content and also contains too much chloride. As a result, both waters are inappropriated for plant growth. Also, for water number 18, the yellow cell on sulfates indicates that sulfur is too high. By using this table, you can confirm that at high levels both chlorine and sodium ions are harmful to plants. Here, you can observe the known tolerance levels for some of them. As it can be seen, except for errors or omissions, there are many plants that will grow well over 100 ppm of sodium ions or 160 ppm of chlorine. Consequently, to start a nutrient solution preparation using water having ionic values higher than those established here is a grave mistake. This problem can also apply with other ions. It is not possible to formulate a good nutrient solution starting with a bad water containing dissolved solids as setting the upper permissible limits. The calculation spreadsheets of Vita and HC express these considerations in a straightforward manner. Now, the formula calculator's basic table is shown. At the upper part are the micro elements, and at the bottom, the micro elements that are required by the plants. The presentation of this movie is done using PPM units. However, Bitter and HC allows you to select the calculations in millimoles per liter. Thus, you can work with your preferred units of measurement. Maximum and minimum lines of ionic values indicate the ranges where most of the recognized Hyaluronic researchers working in their formulas. The other values reported as a string maximum and minimum are those used in a very few extreme formulas. When selecting a value for a nutrient formula, it is recommended to stay inside of the maximum minimum ions range, in which case the cell will remain blue. If some research out of that range wants to be done, the corresponding cell will change to yellow, but a red cell will be shown if the selected values is completely out of the acceptable table ranges. Here, 
I have selected figures for each ion. All of them inside the limiting ranges maximum minimum. In other words, I design the nutrient formula I want to get for my plants to be inside those limits, meaning that the formula is correct. In order to reach the designed formula, the amount of salts to add will vary according with the amount of salts dissolved in the water supply. The ionic balance required by water number 3 on our example is shown now in the chart. There is only one observation, the number in the red cells for the chlorine ions. Since that number is negative, it indicates that the water supply has 15 ppm more of chlorine ions than the designed formula. As 85 ppm is already in the water, once the nutrient solution is prepared, it will have at least the same amount of chlorine ions as the original water. It obviously can't be less. However, we can change that figure 70 to 85 in our design formula. Automatically, this will result in a zero of chlorine ions to add. If we want to prepare the same formula using water number 9, logically, figures vary somewhat. This water has a high sodium ion content too much considering our desired formula design. It could be used only for sodium tolerant plants, but very carefully, and results will be not optimal. As we already know, water number 18 has an excess of sulfates, chlorine, and sodium. In spite of any manipulation, this water is not suitable to be used in preparing an acceptable nutrient solution. Purification by using reverse osmosis is the only way in which this water could ever be used to supply a sustainable commercial growing project. In the next video, I will be describing how to use Vitaran HC to obtain the final formula.